Fleet cars haven't changed much since the 1980s. Traditionally, they're used in the transport industry by company employees while operating the corporate vehicles. The challenge is these cards, they're often issued by a single company and they can only be used at specific locations. This lack of choice and clunky user experience means that for many companies, payment innovations are leaving corporate fuel cards in the dust. We're gonna take a look at how fleet cards and payments are being taken into the 21st century next on this episode of Morgan and Morgan. So picture this, you've just been handed the keys to the company car and also given a company fuel card. The first thing you're told is you can only fuel at these specific locations. And depending upon where you're driving, you might have to waste more fuel and time going out of route just to simply refill your tank. It gets even better. Depending upon your location and company, you may be given multiple fuel cards for different providers. And each one of them comes with a new pin number that you need to remember. For trucking companies in particular who drive millions of miles each year, these minor route deviations add up and can cost companies tens of thousands of dollars over the course of an entire year. Also, if you're using multiple fuel cards, each one comes with their own pricing, contract models, formats, and specific instructions drivers must remember to even use the card. So when we talk about pain at the pump, we forget that some of this pain comes from trying to figure out how to even authorize the transaction. Is there a better way to streamline this act of simply paying for something? Or can the company card finally get us into the 21st century? Joining us today to do a deep dive in how and why we got here and what this future of fleet payments looks like is Daniel Simon, founder and CEO of Coast. It's a startup aiming to use its expense management software to help companies manage and control fuel and fleet spending. Previously, Daniel co-founded the consumer finance startup Bread, which according to TechCrunch, was sold to Alliance Data Systems for over $500 million in 2020. Daniel, welcome to the show. Hey Thomas, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on. I'm super, super excited. Kind of wanted to kick things off here. You know, old fleet payment platforms and looking at technology, fleets historically utilize these specific fuel cards. And so, you know, how, what are some ways that technology can even start to disrupt this, this kind of 30, 40 year old frozen in time system? Look, if you're a company in the United States that owns or operates a fleet of vehicles, that could be the $800 billion trucking business that everybody knows about. But critically, it's also plumbers or landscape crews, HVAC installers, like school bus companies, you name it. You've got a commercial payments need that's analogous in a lot of ways to the need that's solved in other businesses by your Amex corporate card, uh, or if you want sort of some of the newer startups, uh, you know, like Ramp or Rex or Divi, you need to be able to give your employees something that they can use to pay for job-related expenses. When those expenses have to do with a vehicle, which could be for maintenance or really gas, like buying gas is the biggest use case, and, and the employees are your drivers, you have a bunch of specialized needs to prevent unauthorized charges. You want to make sure that your drivers are buying the right grade of gas, they're not you know, buying cigarettes in the convenience store, or gassing up their personal car. Uh, and, and this is a, the, the, the need to um, sort of control those kinds of expenses is a massive space that's been dominated by a handful of players that, as you mentioned at the top of the show, you know, are, are really at least partly built on, on decades old technology. And developments in recent years have sort of created the opportunity now to do something that's truly transformational in the industry. I mean, when we looked at sort of the last decade of financial technology, of fintech. You know, we saw so much product innovation and the development of like low or no cost financial services that was for consumers or some categories of businesses like startups that have raised venture capital. But the fleet segment, you know, which is so vast and vital to our economy is still underserved. We, we think it deserves better. Now, our customers complain that existing solutions are painful for both the employee driver and, and the fleet manager as well. And many existing fleet cards operate on these proprietary networks, closed loop networks that were built by the incumbents. So as you said at the top of the show, drivers can waste valuable time, time that could be otherwise spent on their routes getting to the next job, 
looking for a station that accepts their business's fuel card, entering all sorts of identification information at the fuel pump required to authorize the transaction. The manager software is also difficult to navigate. And we think that fleets need payments products that are intuitive and easy to use. And so that's what we've created, right? Well, we've built a modern fleet card entirely from the ground up. We've sort of reimagined how it should be if it were actually born online, <coughs> spoke our modern sort of interactive and digital language. It's easy to use. It has modern experiences that are delivered over the web, on mobile, over SMS. It runs on Visa, so it can work at any fuel merchant that accepts credit cards, as well as for non-fuel categories, so not just at the pump. The core of the product is a sophisticated expense management solution that allows fleet managers to set policies and rules that make a difference for their fleet so they can control spending through the lens of their vehicles, through the lens of their employees. You know, we recently did some consumer research, and one of the findings that we had is that companies that aren't using fleet cards find that tracking fuel expenses is incredibly time-consuming at twice the rate that users that do have fleet cards find it to be. They find tracking miles per gallon is super important. Without a fuel card, sort of going truck to truck in the lot and checking odometers every evening, that can be super time-consuming. And with the existing solutions, fleets struggle to understand and manage their spend. They're unable to get clear and actionable insights about their businesses because they don't have the simple and intuitive connection of payments into their accounting platforms, their expense reporting, their vehicles, telematics, their fleet management software. So fleets need their kind of employee and vehicle payments seamlessly integrated into the rest of their operations. Incumbent product offerings we find are also riddled with expensive hidden fees and, and hard to understand terms. They look nothing like the products of modern fintech businesses that have pioneered real fairness and transparency for consumers and businesses alike, uh, at least in certain categories of businesses, but not so much for fleets. Hidden fees can add up to many thousands of dollars for small businesses, and these have been par for the course in fleet payments, and that's been compounded by the fact that incumbents have failed to deliver innovations in their products. And again, we feel that fleets need that fairness and transparency in their financial products, which is what we've been focused on uh, from day one. You know, finally, I'll say that we invest in security and reducing fraud. You know, our cards come with a chip built in, uh, you know, by default, you know, it comes at a premium to us, but it helps the security and the fraud reduction for the fleets that we serve. All in all, we think that like the fleet card generally is at a moment of reinvention, and that's what we're trying to bring into the world. Do you feel, and this is this is what kind of blew my mind with fleet cards, I came from a trucking startup and the, the conversation was, we need a fleet card. We need to figure out what we're paying on. And a lot of these fleet cards, drivers would call in three to four times a day saying, how do I do my pin? How do I do this? Why can't it work at this one station? Um, looking at challenges, you know, trying to make something transparent and trying to take on this incumbent, you know, uh, uh, not duopoly, but it's almost like a cartel of large fleet card operators. What were some of the challenges that you found as you started this company that you kind of had to help overcome in trying to challenge the way people are viewing this industry? Yeah, I, I mean, it's a great question. I mean, like the first thing I'll say is one thing that wasn't so much of a challenge is making people know that they need a fleet card in, in their category. You know, we, we looked at a study that was conducted by Shell in, in recent years, uh, and, and what we saw was, was, was pretty striking. I mean, most fleet managers believe that improving practices to reduce fraud by, for instance, using a fuel card can reduce their fuel spend by 5%. A, thir a third of folks believe that it could reduce their fuel spend by more than 10%. Um, a huge number of drivers will uh, sort of admit that they've seen other drivers in their fleets uh, committing uh, fraud and, and sort of abusing the fuel card program from their employer. And that occurs in many forms. It could be siphoning fuel to, to, to fill up your personal car or to sell to others is, is the most popular category. But there's card cloning, there's account hacking, intercepting other people's pins. Uh, they, they've all been cited by at least 30 percent or more of drivers. So it's not hard to start a conversation with a fleet manager uh, about fuel cards because they already know they have an issue with expensive use. Um, but you need to show them, and this was the challenge, of how they should sort of reimagine and rethink about the product category uh, anew. Part of, part of it is just about reimagining what's possible in the same way, like I said earlier, that fintech has really reimagined and transformed other industries. So it doesn't have to be a world of sort of delayed statements that come long after transactions took place. It doesn't have to just be tied to the plastic card as how you think about 
uh, expenses. Imagine logging in and seeing your transactions in real time, not tied just to a card, but to different drivers and vehicles. The drivers are moving around and using different cards with different vehicles. You know, with policies that are determined by the business owner or fleet manager in a way that makes sense for uh, employees' needs. We've moved from a strictly card-based model to a system that accounts for sort of all of the messiness and complexity when you have all these different employees in your different fleet vehicles, what you care about is the driver and the vehicle and the policies you have for them, not the piece of plastic. And that's how you want your policies, controls, and reporting to work. So tied together with other data like that from your company's accounting system uh, or other sources, you can look at a more holistic picture of the expenses of your company and sort of where your dollars are going. So all of that sort of the modern software, a mobile driver experience that's really driven over tools like SMS as opposed to prompts at the pump, which we've done away with entirely. You know, that's a learning curve for folks because of what they've gotten used to. But our customers get it within like days of starting with Coast because we've designed the software to make it intuitive. We also need to get people to unlearn simply thinking about, well, how many pennies off per gallon are you going to save us? Because it's not just about sort of how many cents off as a marketing gimmick your fuel card provider can give you. But it's about sort of the flexibility, as you've said earlier, about being able to fill up anywhere along your route, to have the flexibility to choose the lowest price gas station and to avoid all of the crazy hidden fees in addition to getting all of the control to reduce abuse and fraud. You know, what's that worth to you in terms of how many cents off a gallon you can get with us? And so when the customers send us, you know, their invoices from their existing providers, we show them how much money they can be saving, which, which to your point, can really be in the many thousands of dollars in a given year. You know, it's a real aha moment for them. It takes some explaining as people need to sort of uh, use their imagination on how a fleet card really could and should work. Uh, but it's something that uh, our customers really understand. Well, that's what's so interesting. I talk about, especially with smaller and even larger trucking companies, it almost feels like when we are looking at fleet cards, how much off, how much percentage can I save? Oh, I'll just tolerate the fact that I can only go to one specific fuel location just for the savings. So what you're saying is actually, if you take that into consideration, if you have the ability to go anywhere and have visibility, it's actually going to save you more money than just getting five cents off the top line, but now you're stuck having to build your routes around this particular provider. Well, let me give you two examples of customers that are real customers of Coast and what we've seen. In the one example, we had a customer who had a program from an incumbent provider that was tied to a particular gas station brand, which gave them a certain number of pennies off per gallon. They had all of their drivers always filling up at that gas station, but there was an equidistant gas station from another brand that just had, you know, 15 cents lower pricing just all the time than, than the, the brand with um, uh, the fuel card that they were using. And by using Coast and having the flexibility to choose where to go, they realized an instant savings. And that says nothing of the time that was saved by uh, having that flexibility. We had another customer that actually calculated that by moving to Coast, they were saving tens of thousands of dollars in man hours over the course of the year because what they were doing with an incumbent provider was having all of their drivers fill up at the same station every morning with long lines and an enormous amount of time wasted by allowing them to fill up anywhere along their route because our visa product is universally accepted and we give you that flexibility, they were able to be much more efficient with how they were scheduling their driver's days. And for them, that meant a whole lot more to them. And I'm speaking about the, the product and being able to go anywhere also opens up the world, like with a partnership with Visa for the data. And so that's such a strange concept that uh, carriers and fleets of any size have not really asked is why can't I monitor what's being paid in one location? What are some of the ways looking at how they're collecting it now in the past? Does this open up any doors uh, for, for companies to actually figure out now that we can go anywhere? Uh, any savings? You know, has there been any insights you all have noticed now uh, with this technology that have allowed you allowed your customers to make better decisions? Yeah, great question. Um, so what Coast does is we give fleets clear reporting and visibility by capturing detailed line item level transaction data for gas station purchases. And we match it within the Coast platform, like I said earlier, to specific 
vehicles and drivers. Using the software the Coast is developing, managers will be able to take that data and connect it with their business's vehicle telematics, their accounting systems and ERPs for further actionable business insights. So for example, we'll be able to tell fleets, your drivers took the following route yesterday and they bought gas here, here, and here. Well, did you realize that if you'd had them buying gas here, here, and there, you would have saved some hundreds of dollars or something like that. And that's like real actionable in the moment insights that actually make a difference for fleet operators. At the same time, we're able with that data to provide the granular controls that fleets need. They want to restrict purchases to only fuel or to particular categories of merchants, because remember that as a visa product, we can be used outside of just the fueling stations that have historically been the restriction of a lot of products from incumbents. They can also apply different policies to particular people or vehicles to detect and avoid unauthorized charges and wasteful spending. Or conversely, they can allow their drivers to use that same card to make a permissible amount of purchases at non-fuel vendors that they might need for them to do their jobs. Uh, so that sort of visibility that sort of data that we're capturing from the point of sale and from other sources in the fleet's operating stack has allowed us to create this more flexible experience while still giving the fleet operators more control. A crazy future question here, thinking about this data and visibility. So say I'm a fleet of 75 trucks and I can, you know, I'm limiting my purchases to certain items. So I can't let them obviously buy beer at the front counter with the fuel card or I can't let them buy snack foods. But, you know, is there any value eventually in me figuring out uh, that my driver's spending habits, maybe they're buying a certain brand of oil or they're buying a certain brand of uh, windshield wiper fluid. Does that kind of open the door with this technology for like big data to potentially, uh, you know, figure out maybe we should be changing vendors or maybe we should be uh, making adjustments? Because that's kind of makes me feel like that's the next step is now with visibility, we can harness the data. I, I think that that's a fantastic question. Like, I think that there's an enormous opportunity that comes from, on the one hand, telematics devices and the increasing ubiquity of connected vehicles and the enormous volumes of data they generate on the one hand. And all of this detailed line item data about transactions that we're getting from the merchant on the other hand. If you can intersect the vehicle data with the transaction and purchase data, we can find all sorts of opportunities for efficiency savings and ideally growth for our fleet customers. And so we're working on this at Coast. It's, it's, it's all very early, but we think we'll have exciting things to share uh, over time because we're gathering a ton of information about fleets, vehicles, drivers, transactions, data from the vehicle itself to try to produce the kind of insights that fleet managers can use to understand where their drivers are spending and why so that they can craft policies to address those driver needs and the, the business's behaviors. I think there's a huge opportunity for machine learning and artificial intelligence. As we gather more data, we'll learn more about these spending habits and can proactively push more insights to our fleet manager customers so they can find more opportunities for savings, efficiency, and growth. So early days, but we're pretty excited by it. That I just love that idea. I love that future of what you can do because uh, I was flying and someone was, uh, a story I was told by a friend of mine was this person was from Hershey's and they were trying to figure out how many times truck drivers at the truck stops would buy the chocolates and the other items. And they couldn't figure out really how, you know, if it was popular, if a certain brand was more popular because none of the data was available. So if I'm a fleet and I'm using the platform and I can restrict certain things, maybe I'm gonna uh, unrestrict fresh vegetables and have a driver uh, be healthy bonus and say, hey, you know what? I'll throw it on your 50 bucks per day. We'll let you buy some stuff. You know, you could buy some fresh food or vegetables from some places and we'll open up the cart. Does that kind of allow you to nudge good habits almost instead of buying like some of the regular truck stop foods or buying other extra items with this card. Yeah, with, with uh, sort of the, uh, the data that we're getting from the points of sale at fuel merchants with uh, modern workflows for receipt capture and parsing, we can, like you say, move drivers towards product categories that we think that they're likelier, or sorry, that fleet managers would be likelier to want them to purchase. We can also create efficiencies by saying, you know, like if, if you're using the Coast Fleet card to make a purchase, for instance, for your vehicle at a tire retailer on the business's behalf, to not do the super duper deluxe, you know, expensive 
set of tires, but to use the ones that are within the fleet's policy. And to do that in a way that's actually very easy to transact for the driver. It's as simple as presenting uh, the Coast card to a card reader at the merchant, but still gives that driver that fine grain of control. You know, uh, again, like all of this is stuff that we're going to be sort of layering on uh, over time, we have a lot of great controls even today at fuel merchants as we open up to different categories uh, and, and we're able to get more insight into transaction line item detail. We can start to create both those efficiencies and those behaviors that you're describing for these vehicle fleets, for their managers and for their drivers. I wanted to circle back on one too because I'm liking how we're talking about the future and then we're looking at Traditional incumbents, fuel cards, you know, they haven't been really updated since the 1980s or even early 90s. And so do you think part of this is just because, well, I already have them captured in my version of the ecosystem. There's just not as much incentive because now I'm giving them these savings. They're just going to keep using it. And a lot of folks are not really educated to start asking, well, what else can I do? I think that what we find is that people are frustrated. Uh, I, I think that... Um, you know, uh, there's been like a number of giant players over the course of, uh, like you said, uh, dozens of years uh, that have really dominated the market. Um, and while they solve like a really critical need and pain point of companies that operate vehicle fleets, which is really to have that level of visibility and control and reporting that you might not get from a general purpose corporate card, as you said, like a lot of this technology is based on systems that were built quite a long time ago, and 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 uh, you know, like the the innovations haven't always been at the fastest pace that they possibly could be when you're talking about incumbent providers. So while there might be some fleets who say, "Hey, we've been using such and such a vendor for as long as we can remember," and you know, we don't really think about it all that much, what we find is that there's a vast segment who's frustrated by that lack of an innovation pace, and those are the ones who are looking for something new and and we're there to raise our hand uh, to say that we've got it when they come looking. What we find is that some of the incumbent solutions, particularly for small and medium-sized businesses, don't necessarily integrate all that deeply in the rest of the operating stack of uh, the fleets that they serve. And so when folks are looking to switch, it's not always major surgery. They can throw out the old plastic, start using Coasts, and then once they do that, Coast will do a better job, we hope, to integrate into the rest of the tooling and the operating processes of these businesses to really become an important sort of embedded feature in how they run their business. Have they looking at feedback now? Because right now, Freightways have reported on rising diesel prices. We're over five, you know, 560 something a gallon now. So fuel is becoming a major thing. Has there been any good feedback, success stories, or anything to highlight like just how crazy of a thought it is to simply bring things up to the present day compared to uh, you know, the, this trend with incumbents. Yeah. I mean, we've been really excited by the feedback we've got from customers to date. Like, as you point out, um, you know, there's never been uh, a time quite like this for you to want to take control of your fuel spending with prices where they are in recent months. Uh, you know, we've got customers saving upwards of 20k a year by not paying egregious and unnecessary fees and that's just directly the fees to the fleet card companies to say nothing for the opportunities for further value from the better efficiency in operations like the example i gave earlier of the company that doesn't have to have its drivers queuing up at a single gas station because of the restrictions that are on their uh, previous incumbent card uh, and not, also not for nothing i mean uh, you know we talk a lot about software and modern technology, but our customers can also research, reach us on our customer service lines where we're committed to solving any issues that we have, uh, that they have, excuse me, which is really important for business owners and fleet managers who are looking to grow their businesses to be able to actually speak to a company that is committed to solving any of the problems that they have in using the product, you know, uh, in, in a way that actually is uh, reliable and, and attentive to their needs. We've had amazing feedback uh, on that as well. O overall, I think our customers are telling us that Coast has been a breath of fresh air after their experiences with legacy providers. We're looking forward to opening up whole new value for them as we continue to grow and expand our product offering, you know, in terms of more expense management features and controls, more supported purchase categories, more integrations into their, you know, HRIS and payroll systems, workforce management, telematics, fleet management software, accounting and ERP, 
richer reporting, more accounts payable automation features, and expense management and review. Um, so so we're, we're sort of just getting started, but the feedback that we've got from customers, even with the product that's out there today, has been really exciting for us. And, you know, we're really encouraged to, to just keep trying to build more value for them. I really appreciate the information as well, just because it's so important, especially now given all the craziness going on, to examine, like, what am I paying for, especially with fees for fuel cards? Because they'll pay, you got to pay them if you don't use enough uh, or if you're not meeting the terms. If folks want to get a hold of you, uh, is LinkedIn, website, what's the best way if they're interested in learning more information? Yeah, I'll just say on that last point, I mean, like, we don't have per gallon administration fees. We don't have, uh, you know, unused card fees, which you just mentioned. We don't have setup fees. Uh, we don't have, like, a late payments fees that are an egregious percentage of, uh, your outstanding balance. We don't have electronic payments fees. We don't have a whole slew of fees that have been very common in uh, uh, legacy fleet cards practice. We charge a fair, transparent $2 per employee per month uh, uh, fee to use the card. Uh, and, and that's something that uh, is important to us is for our customers to understand what it is that they're actually going to be paying and not to be surprised by the bill when it comes due at the end of the month. Uh, to reach us, the best thing to do is to go to coastpay.com. Uh, you'll be able to uh, book an appointment there to speak to somebody on the team, or you can just go through our pre-qualification process, uh, which takes uh, only minutes to figure out if you're eligible for the program uh, or not. It doesn't uh, have any impact to your credit score. There's no personal guarantee that's involved, and it costs nothing to see if you're eligible. So uh, I would encourage anybody who's interested in learning more to go to coastbay.com for information, to speak to somebody from the team, or just to see if you're pre-qualified. Perfect. Daniel, thanks so much for coming on the show. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to keeping an eye as you all get those extra features. I'd love love to keep learning how especially this big data uh, can also influence not only driver habits, but save companies tons of money. Uh, Thomas, thank you so much for having me on. It was really great talking to you uh, about saving fleets time and money. And, and uh, yeah, we'll definitely keep you posted as we continue to develop the product and the business. Perfect. And uh, that is a wrap for today's show. But keep an eye out. We have our new time Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. And I am Thomas Wasson. Join us next week because we'll be doing it live.